<laughs> Thanks for coming this morning, and um, just for our viewers, please introduce yourself. Okay, I'm Nwadi Oga, I blog on Coding Hold Pro. up, wait a minute, slow down. I've done it for you people, it's okay, because I know you were like, whoop, again. Nwadi Oga. It's a Nigerian name, so I feel a little bit fake right now, but I, I don't have Ghanaian though. Oh, okay, so mother or father's Ghanaian? My mom's Ghanaian. Your mom's Ghanaian, yeah. your dad's Nigerian. So was you raised in Nigeria at all? No. You've been to Nigeria? Yeah, yeah I've been, oh, okay. but... But so I come to Ghana more, more than Nigeria. Okay, okay, okay. So you got more love for that. Yeah, a little bit. Sorry, guys. That's what we like to hear. <laughs> so where was you born and raised? Um, Maryland. So okay. I was born in Silver Spring, Maryland. And I was raised in Maryland for a bit. And then I moved to England for about 11 years. And then I moved to Ghana a little bit over two years ago. Okay. So why did you move? So from Maryland, you've had the experience there. You went to London, you've had the experience there in terms of the noises, the sounds, the taste, the flavors, the everything. And then you decided to come to Ghana. Why did you move? Um, after like I graduated, I was finding it hard to find a job, and I just wanted to try something dramatic. Well, I had to, you know, I just got to the point I had to be dramatic. So I was like, what's the most dramatic thing I can do? <laughs> Is that what you really did? Like, just toss a coin in the air kind of thing? No, no, no. <laughs> That's what it sounds no, there was, like. like prayer involved and stuff. Oh, okay. like, I, I prayed about it because I'm a okay. Christian. So if you take out the Christianity part about it, because not everybody wants to hear that, but. Um, it was pretty much, I'm stuck in a lot, I can't get a job in my field, what am I going to do? Ghana has a lot of opportunities. Um, I what was it about that that made you think from, at that point had you been to Ghana? Yeah. Oh you had been? Yeah. Oh okay, so you've already got the knowledge of that, yeah. some people might be thinking, but randomly, why Ghana? Doesn't but some people so. do that, you know, just yeah. look at a map and just go, here, let's go. Like coming to America, is what we really do. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not that crazy. <laughs> I like to plan a little bit, just a little bit. Um, yeah, so basically it was just because I have an interest in like culture and the arts, I wanted to come and experience it and be a part of it and help the community in some way or the other. So it was. I thought it was best to be here. If I wanted to help, I had to be here rather than help from over there. But when you say help, what is the help? I'm still trying to figure that out. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to come and save the world. And I got here, I'm like, mm, no, actually you're not. Because <laughs> it doesn't so work like be, that. You wanted to be Ghana's answer to Shiva. <laughs> I don't know who she is, but she sounds good. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> but instead of like the, you know, the spandex and everything else, you're going to wear the cloth version. Yeah. Oh, I love, I mean, I'm not representing today. <laughs> but I do love some African proof. It's not about, <laughs> don't worry about the representing. Because to me, I don't think that Personally, I'm not saying this is the gospel known to Sakina, but personally, I don't think that it depicts the whole of Ghana for everybody to always wear print. I don't wear print all the time, I wear it as and when I want to. I wear it because I love it, just like I wear anything else. I have no look, I have no standard look, I just wear whatever I want to wear. So if people feel it's comfortable to wear shorts and t shirt or a cloth inspired one or a non cloth inspired one or a nylon one or a polyester one, Go for it, is what I say. Because it's what makes the person and how you feel. Says the people, stylist. Oh, you're a stylist girl? Yes. So, <laughs> to me, because if you wear something because it's a tag or it's been forced on you, this is not going to shine. And if it doesn't shine, then people are going to pass you why. So it's about how you, you own the product and let the product wear with you instead of being opposite way. So, yeah, go for it, wear it. Because the reason I'm saying that is because a lot of people think Ghana and they think you have to wear print. Is that, is that so? Um, no, it reminded me of um, an article I read. I think it was on gfuck.com. G oh, yeah. D mm -hmm. Hey. Jifa. Um, Jifa. Yeah. Jifa. Jifa. Oh, my bad. I'm sorry, girl. I love you, girl. <laughs> but um, she she was saying African print's not really that African anyway because it's yeah. made in China. China. A lot of so, them are. Yeah, there's a, um, you can tell the different version. Excuse me, and you can the, re the how you can. Uh, this is not about me. I don't know why I'm talking about this. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> how you get to know if the cloth is authentic to Ghana or if it's a Chinese made one is if you just feel the texture of the cloth. So if you feel the texture of this. I'm gonna embarrass myself now. Mm -hmm. It's got a, it's got a, it's got a texture to it. But if I had one with me, which was an authentic Ghana one, you would know because it's got a rough texture. 
Oh, that's why I'm saying I'm rising myself because I'm clearly not wearing a garment print. <laughs> I'm wearing a print that's been cheap by China. China <laughs> have made it and made it really cheap, so it's not. <clears throat> anyway, moving on. So yeah, as we were saying, so about your. <laughs> so yeah, that's how you get to find out about whether the cloth is authentic to Ghana or if it's um, a Chinese production. The Chinese production is normally flat and smooth, and a Ghana one is rough in texture. Okay. There you go. Class one one. There's my part over. So yeah, what about you? As you were saying, so yes, you've been here for two years and what is it that's kept you here for these two years so far? I'm stubborn and I was hopeful. <laughs> I'm stubborn and hopeful. Um, the first year was really easy for me, in ter well, relatively speaking, because I got here, I got a job really quickly. I started working in Cantonment, so I didn't have to do that whole doom sort thing. I was making good money. So I didn't actually really see what was happening. <clears throat> and then I quit my job at the beginning of this year. And then I wanted to um, do some social media consulting and just work with brands and build their profiles. And then I really began to experience Ghana this year. So I, I think it's, it feels like I've only been in Ghana for one year because I felt that doom so. I felt the heat, I felt the struggle. Getting people to pay you one time, get um, different cultures of how to engage people in business. Because I was in an American company before, so it wasn't really it wasn't really that different, um, but then I'm um, engaging on a more local level. I hate the word local, but on a more local level, we got to see that um, business practices are slightly different, expectations are different, people don't seem to like to talk about money. Um, and so I had to, I thought I could overcome it and um, still be successful despite the challenges, which is why I'm still here. So you kind of blindsided yourself to the reality in front of you. Yeah. I'm trying mean, to change it, think I can change it. Yeah, yeah. I think a lot of people come in there thinking that they can change it. But I think you have to understand it before you can change it. So um, I'm, I'm trying to understand it, but I don't know. Have you understood it yet? Do you feel you're there? You're still on the journey or you've understood how you take the scripts to it? I understand what I need for right now. I think with any environment, even your own, it's forever evolving. Um, as I understand it, it progresses a little bit or degresses. Or regresses? It degresses or regresses? Regresses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm forever learning. <laughs> We're having too much fun here. So, for the people that are watching this, they're thinking, why are we watching this? What is this? Tell them, what is it about Ghana that you would say, come, live, stay, or holiday, or that you would say, my friend, don't come? Okay. Holiday, let's talk about holiday. Holiday is good because it's always hot. I don't even... I, I, <laughs> you know, I mean, black people do tan, though, don't get it twisted. I am a little bit darker than when I came, so, you know... So, <laughs> sunscreen or whatever you want to use the holistic alternative um shea butter shea butter really and cool no that'll make you fry <laughs> i'm just saying <laughs> what it's is the garden version yeah, yeah it's good for the skin though yeah. very good for the skin and the hair girl. anyway um, <laughs> um so beaches um food amazing food. oh my gosh um if we're talking about holiday people are super friendly sometimes a little bit too friendly so if you're not very tolerant um, i'm um, I like my personal space and people are so friendly that I'm like, mm, just, yeah. <laughs> so then, to stay, to stay, what would you say about, okay, yes, to stay? To stay a um, I would say there are a lot of opportunities. People don't get it twisted. People think like we're living in the bush somewhere. And yes, we have an electricity issue, but despite all of that, there's so many issues and there's so many ways you can um, um, go on the career la ladder and excel. Um, especially if you have foreign experience, which is a positive, but it's also a negative because I feel it's a bit annoying, even though I benefit from this, that I can just come with my British degree and just like knock somebody else off just because I have an accent. But it does work to your benefit if you're outside. The thing that I don't like though is the same thing that works to my benefit is that people are judged on, there's a big class issue and I really hate that. Again, it works to my benefit, but I really hate that because, you know, the cleaner doesn't get the same respect as the um, receptionist who doesn't get the same respect as the manager. I mean, I guess it's worldwide, but it's more extreme here, so you feel it more. Um, and women don't have the same rights as men. People think women are made of glass, in my experience, and I don't really like that, so. Except for when they're carrying my bags and stuff, that's how long. But anyway. 
<laughs> so, I mean, there's a lot of pros and cons, but I think the pros outweigh the cons, is what I'm trying to say. Okay. Yeah. So, if I had to ask you, what is your best moments about Ghana, what would it be to sum it up to everybody who is watching you right now and they're like, I don't know, what would you say is your best moments? You say, I would love it. This is me, I'm coming back. Because you're going to Maryland, aren't you? Yep. And you're coming back. Have you bought your return ticket? I've bought a return ticket. Okay. I don't know how long I'm going to be here. But uh, <laughs> what I'll say is um, best moments here are meeting amazing people. It's so much easier to network here because um, people are, it's easier to meet people here, I guess, because our, our circles are so small um, in comparison. And so I would say that those are my best moments. My worst moments are um, not being understood. Um, whether it's in person or online, but I mean, that's why you get over it. <laughs> and I've got one last question. Do you speak any of the 39 languages that own to Ghana? I speak a little bit of Ghana, but it's not, it's so little, I'm not sure if it qualifies. So it have a conversation, it. have a conversation. Yeah, like Papa. <laughs> <laughs> Does it get you by? Can they sell you, basically? Um, they can sell me in trees, they can't sell me in Ghana. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're looking to sell somebody... The reason I'm asking is wondering is anybody who doesn't know any of the 39 languages if they can get by in Ghana, do you think they can? No, because they will cheat you. They will take your money and they will run. And they will smile at you while they do it, in general. So how else can I get by if I don't know any of the languages? Is stay. it just about learning about having to stay away? No, no, don't stay away. I'm just saying, you know, if you want to be, you know, there's some people who come and they want to be like, oh, I want to be one with the culture and I want to be local and, you know, and then they decide to wander off by themselves. And you know, there's just going to be this nice man who wants to sell you something. He's going to be like, oh, my friend, you know, come to my shop. Here, this thing is 1,000 million cities. No, no, I'll give you good prices, 999. You know? <laughs> and people like, I mean, if you don't know, you're going to be like, oh, this guy is really nice. He's really doing me a favor. It's like, no, my mom says if you're shopping, just anything they tell you, divide it by two. Huh. <laughs> and that is probably the price. So, oh, your mom's <laughs> cut right. Wow, but okay. Do you know what? Okay, can I need to But yeah, Ooh, but you. you can survive. Don't worry. You can survive. It's lovely. Just be careful. Don't be too um, idealistic about it because at the end of the day, we're all human beings and they've got money to make and they make it predominantly off tourists, let's be real. So, yeah. Girl, that was some knowledge. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Nice One love again, you too, and um, we'll definitely be posting for people to know you and what you do and all about the natural hair. I'm sure that's going to come soon too. Thank you. <laughs>